For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. It's come to our attention that the Allied forces um, all around the world in active service fighting for their country, even though they're in danger and they're missing their loved ones, they all have one thing in common. The love of one man, the respect of one fellow soldier. He's a civilian, but he's one of them. He is... To some, uh, 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 just a, a little bald-headed fool, Carl Pilkington. Carl, what do you think? What do you think of this? It's an honour, isn't it, to do this? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, there's people out there, Carl, they're fighting in Afghanistan, Iraq, all over the globe. They're in a dark building. They're not breaking radio silence. Morale, often low. There's one man they can turn to to cheer him up. Come on, they want some words of encouragement, some words of wisdom. Something to keep them going. A message to the troops. Come on. Go, Carl. What you're is like, it? You're like their Winston Churchill. I don't know what to say to him, really. Do you know any soldiers? Well, yeah, my brother was one, wasn't he? Yeah, mm, but he got kicked out. Why did your brother get kicked out of the army? Um. well, it's a few things. I, I think you get a few chances. I think the final straw was nipping out for some fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> just think of that. <laughs> just think of that. Um, Amazing. And it's just see that, just a little corner shop, just like the things shaking, jumping off the shelves, and they're going, what is this? What is going on? 20 rotten please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's loads of things. It was that. Um, <laughs> what else did he do? I think the sergeant wasn't happy that my mum wrote, wrote the sergeant a letter. Um, trying to get my brother out of going to Northern Ireland. Yeah. What did she say? I love this. What did she say? Wow. She wrote a letter. Like, oh. trying to get him out of PE. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. It was all Let's like... He's had a chesty cough. Let's not forget, your, your mum is a person who put Tipex on a spider so your dad couldn't kill it, so she knew it oh, was yeah, the right so spider. In up. case your dad killed a real spider, then thought, I'd better replace it. <laughs> I mean, the no, it wasn't, it wasn't just that. That was, that, it was Tipex, so that when my dad was vacking up, or my mum was vacking up, it stood out. It wasn't like, it wasn't like branding a sheep. Right. It was there, so it stood out, because they used to have, like, um, what's the name? L laminate flooring. Right. And my dad changed it to darker carpet. So right. all of a sudden, you couldn't see it anymore. I've never heard anything like this. I don't remember this story. You, uh, no, she she no. had a pet spider? What do you mean? It she was just a, a spider. spider. Yeah, he kept a, she kept a spider. They had a spider, but then it became a pet because it was there all the time, as opposed to just getting rid of it straight away. <laughs> But, you know, because you didn't clear away no, straight away, house. suddenly it's a pet. It's, it's... Yeah, it's a house spider, because they live in houses. You make them welcome, you get rid of other little bugs and termites and stuff. My brother's left home, I've left home, my sister's gone. It's something for my mum, isn't it? She's got a budgie. There's only so much you can do with that. It's not as free, is it, as a spider? Right. So she just looks after that one. They oh, live for about so eight lonely. years. I'm bored of a budgie. Get yourself a spider. <laughs> anyway, they live in holes. that's a different thing altogether. She just wrote to the sergeant and said, um... Just sort of, you know, look, I didn't want him to join the army. It was his dad. Uh, he didn't get a job. His dad told him, if you don't get a job, you're going to join the army. Mm. He ended up joining. He's joined at a bad time. He hasn't had enough practice at this yet. <laughs> Can you just let Surely him that's for them. enough practice. Surely that's for them to decide. <laughs> yeah, no. she's on there going, he can't shoot for Tommy. Yeah. He, <laughs> he was all right about it. The only thing that really annoyed him is my mum started off the letter by saying, hello, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not appropriate. And, um, <laughs> and he called back, though. He did call her and said, look, you know, I don't appreciate it being called Chuck and stuff, but I've got your note. You know, a lot of mothers are in the same boat. Sorry, he actually mentioned don't call me Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he brought it up. Because it's all about respect, isn't it? And Well, she's a civilian. Yeah, but I suppose it's, it's respect still. He's putting his life on the line. Someone's saying, you know, all right, Chuck. <laughs> 
So, uh, so he phoned back and he said, presumably, well, I mean, if I was him, I would have, not only would I have sent him to uh, Northern Ireland instantly, yeah. I'd have put him in the most dangerous spot. Yeah. I mean, that's punishment. To get your mum to write a letter? No, 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 no. He didn't ask me mum to do it. She did it off her own back. He was probably horrified, wasn't he? Oh, oh wow. that bit, imagine that. The sergeant made you go, attention, got a little letter here. <laughs> Let me read it to you. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. <laughs> Just reads it out. And he goes, Pilkington, come here, you old little man. Imagine him reading out in front of the troops. I remember sort of looking up to him, thinking, oh, that's, he's, he's in the army, I want to do that. And he used to come home quite a lot, but he used to do me dad's head in because he'd turn up with like a wagon with like a load of his mates in it. Just turning up on sort of, you know, we didn't have any notice. Just turn up and he'd bring them all in. Come on, he'd be drinking my dad's whiskey, he'd kick off, and dad's saying, get out. Mind the spider. And, uh, Don't tread on the spider. <laughs> yeah, he used to just turn up like half a left troop, and they'd just tack over the house. <laughs> and my dad used to be on night, so he'd hear all this going on, come down and go, what's going on, get out. And he's going, oh, come on, get out. And it'd sort of kick off a bit, I'd see him for a few minutes, and they'd drive off again on the truck. Not it, a model soldier, then? Uh, well, what's, what's a model soldier? I don't know. I mean, I, I always thought it was good. When I was younger and, you know, he joined, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to do that when I get older. And my dad always said, you won't be able to cut it. He said, you can't do it. Oh. And I said, no, I can. I can. Look how good... Because I used to make my bed really neat. All right. So it was mainly housework you were good at. <laughs> yeah. You're probably better off as a mum. No, no, no. I, I, it was like... Because it has to be immaculate, doesn't it? They look for no creases and that. And I yeah. was a bit paranoid with my bed. Just with the, with the duvet and that. I used to duvet. Do they have duvets? Well, I don't, don't know, but just making the bed pride in appearance of, of yeah. the bedroom. Yeah, it's all about discipline. Once, it's all about, once yeah. I made it, no one could sit on it. I used to get all all stressed out and feel sick if someone came in and sat on my bed after I'd made it. So they don't be coming in. And it was annoying because that's where the CV was. So everyone used to come in, so I would go on the CV and sit on my bed. They'd be going, don't sit on my bed. Made it. Right. Uh, Why so, did you used to feel sick? It was a bit of a thing. I just OCD. didn't like it. A I, little I, bit of, yeah. It's like I've, met, I've gone to the trouble of making it. Why have you just come in and sat on it? I wouldn't have made it. Yeah, but, but hold on, though. You, you do that in the army, Sergeant Major comes in and goes, Pilkin, in. And he just, he does it for a laugh. He turns over your bed, he pulls out your locker, he gobs on your shoes, right? He goes, start again, you can't. What are you going to do? Going to be sick? No, you're going to go, yes, yeah, Sergeant Major, I'm going to start again. <laughs> no, I'd say, why, why did you do that? I'm missing home as it is. I'm stressed out. I'm just trying to make me, me, me surroundings as nice as possible. Teddy's on the floor. You keep coming in right. and messing with it. Can you not do that? Who are you talking to, you little bold can? Maybe my dad's right then, because he said he said that. He, I mean, that my dad sort of said the bed making's all right. He said, but you're not that good with laces. <laughs> wow! Did you have to tie your laces? Well, I've just, uh, just never been that good. I can tie them, but they never sort of stay tied for a long time. I have never seen him tie his laces. I've realised that. Yeah. He always comes in. Are does Suzanne little, do them for is you? Is he a little just... mank, one of those little um, mank trainers where they're all tucked in, where you don't see the laces? I tend to just get a good knot on them and then just leave them and kick them off, and then they're tied permanent. So you've got slip-on, laced-up shoes, basically? Yeah. I don't like but laces. They can't be I don't understand enough. why laces are good anyway when you're in the army, especially with boots. You have boots with like about 60 holes in them. If you're in a rush, if you're in bed, you get out of the bed, you make the bed, the sergeant comes in, rips it apart again, he's going, there's a war, and you're going, stop messing with the bed. <laughs> and then I'm there trying to put my boots on. You've got 60 laces. I don't understand why Velcro hasn't been used. Velcro is ideal for a war situation. You're in bed, woo, siren goes off, mm. you jump out. Why do you want boots with loads of laces? Well, that's a thought for the, uh... <laughs> if again. there's any top brass listening. How would you cope, Carl, in a war situation? Ignore the, 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 the mechanics of being a soldier. I'm talking about the fear. I mean, these men and women are brave beyond compare. Mm. Constantly under duress. I was told they had good pain threshold. By whom? Um, a woman at that face rub place I went to. Right. She, uh, because they ask you when you go in. She said, what's your pain threshold like? I said, I don't know, I don't avoid it. <laughs> she was going, yeah, but, you know, would you say you're very, very good, medium or bad? I can't imagine you getting hurt much because, because the, the signals to the brain, you've got, you know, it just is dulled, mm. isn't it, with you? So you don't really... 
Yeah, but then Suzanne always moans at me when I'm going, oh, God, my wisdom teeth is aching. She's going, oh, shut up. She's saying, you haven't got any wisdom teeth, you dopey cat. <laughs> no, she just always goes, I had it, and I didn't make a fuss, but it's one of them things that you can't get through to people pain, isn't it? Yeah. And they don't know what your pain threshold is. So, like I say, I've got brilliant pain threshold. I'm saying my tooth's hurting. She's saying, oh, shut up. But she doesn't know. I wish you'd... I think I've talked about it before about giving someone the pain that you've got. So you go, there, have a feel of that. I'm yeah. in agony here. Yeah, but you've made it up that you've got a high pain threshold. This is, this, no. this is not a sign no, of No, the woman proud. told me. The woman told me. Well, does, does she know? Because I haven't got to it yet. <laughs> When I had the face rub, yeah. she was sticking electric into my head. <laughs> and she was going... <laughs> what sort of place is this? This wasn't a spa? No, it was. It's what Jesus they do now. Jesus Christ! What, she, she... I don't know. So she just plugged something into the mains? She plugged something in and rolled Did it Did she have an assistant called Igor? Was it in a castle in Bavaria? She plugged this thing in, rolled it over my head, <laughs> and said, is that hurting? I was going, no. And she went, all oh, right. And, she said, and then by the end of it, she said, look at that. I had that on full. I said, what is it? She said, it's an electric current. That does something. I was going, really? That does something. She's a scientist. <laughs> and, um, she's yeah. a pain yet. She said, she said, no, when you fill out that form, just put you really good at pain threshold. Put you really good at pain. Are you going to come again? Well, yeah, 50 quid. This is very, like, let's try on your testicles next time. <laughs> so, you know... Fast. Sorry, how was this? What was this supposed to be che achieving? It was why like is, a face why rub. Is, you've gone in for a facial and she's tasting out what well, your pain well, threshold is. Well, that's what I said. I said, hang on a minute, what do you mean? It's meant to be relaxing this. Yeah. You normally have whale noises happening. <laughs> yeah. And now it's going to be me screaming. She said, no, no, it's just, you know, we have to ask, we have to make sure because yeah. there is a bit of pain. Like you know, heat yeah. is heat into these hot yeah. cloths. Um, yeah, a bit of thumb screws. Let's get the thumb screws out now. And plus all that kidney stone pain that yeah, I had. Yeah, but you just were in agony when you had the kidney stones. You don't. I don't remember you having this triumphant pain threshold. You I gave mean, up winged instantly. And yeah. Winged and winged. yeah, because you have to to get seen. If I go in there and I'm going, I'm in agony, and they're going, you don't look like you're in agony. I went, I'd be at the back of the queue. So you have to go in and go, oh, yeah. and so, they're going, quick, get him in. So pain threshold is good for yourself, but it's not good for other people. So you were bullshitting? You didn't feel pain at all? I was in agony, but I can hold it off. I can sit there and be quiet and have a sweat on. But if you do that in a hospital waiting room, it'll be the little Dave who's coming with a pan on his head, who's screaming <laughs> and saying his head's throbbing. That's what I'm saying. So to get seen, you have to put it on. It's like a baby crying. There's nothing wrong with it. What's he crying for? He's probably hungry. Well, I'm hungry. I'm not crying. But that's what they use, isn't it, right. to get attention? So you're, so you're braver than a baby, is what you're saying. You're braver than a baby. <laughs> That's all we've established here. In some cases, in, not in when others. When you fill out the form. Not in others. Sometimes <laughs> babies are braver. When are babies braver? You can chuck them in a pool when they don't panic. <laughs> I'm rubbish. Sorry, will you leave my baby alone? No, I'm doing an experiment. Mr Pilkton, will you stop throwing children in the pool? No, babies. You're, ba you're barred from this swimming pool from now on. I mean babies. It's the same way you can chuck one out of a window and it can land and it won't break its back. It's no, no, that's not true. true. Do not do, do that. Not do that. If that you are a maniac, true. you cannot to throw a baby out of a window. It's just what I've heard. hear that. You're thinking of a cat. And don't throw cats out. Don't throw any living thing yeah, out of a... Just what I've heard. You can't throw a baby out of the window and it won't break its back. What are you talking no, about? No, it's just there's a certain height. It's all about us tenting up. We tense up, don't we? It's like how once someone who fell out of a plane, they passed out, and because they passed out when they landed, they were relaxed. They no. woke up, they were like, oh, yeah, what happened then? Someone fell out of a plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's bollocks. It's not, honestly. How no. far up was the plane? Oh, high up. It's a plane, isn't it? Well, what's the lowest well, height that a plane well, could be at? Even if it was at... 30 feet, that's a height, isn't it? It's a fall without... Yeah, exactly. But if was, it was, the plane, was the plane just on the runway? No, it was high and up, high and up. It was high up and off. Is this the way you went <laughs> for the holiday? We're going to high up and off. <laughs> Fuck me. Can't, can't even talk. So, yeah, pain oh. threshold. I'm very good at it. So, uh, would you say you've ever been brave? Because I was thinking before we did this... I can't think of a time when I've ever been brave. I don't think I've been cowardly. I've just never been in a situation where I needed to be brave, particularly. And I've always managed to avoid fights, conflicts. Yeah. You see, I, uh, when I was in Salford, I'd nip to Greg's to get a pasty. Mm. I heard some bells going off. I came out, just thought, oh, I don't know what that is. Went over to the car, sort of thinking, oh, I can't wait to have this pasty when I get home. Cup mm. of tea, nice cup of tea, maybe a bit of bread. I love the fact that, that his head was just filled with food because he was <laughs> buying food and thinking food. When he's eating, I'm thinking, I'm eating food, food. Just just one big globular mess of food cells in his head yeah. for, the, for the duration of the food experience. I can remember that food thought going on now, and it was probably, like, 15 years ago. <laughs> But I remember how happy I was. 
I'm out of the Greggs, I've got what I want, I'm on my way home, this pie's hot, it's going to be hot when I get home, it's going to be a nice cup of tea, bread. These are the things you save, and yet you forget really important facts. Yeah, he doesn't know why wars are happening, yeah. but he does remember this. Yeah, but yeah. Listen, this is why I remember it. Like I said, you forgot the bit that I said. A bell going off. Mm. I don't know what's going on there. I'm walking over the road, put the key in the car, I turn round, bloke comes running out of the post office, obviously the bell's gone off, he's got a big shotgun, balaclava on, and he stops and looks at me, he's there with a big gun in his hand, and he's looking at me. And I just, I wasn't scared. I just was thinking, does he want me pie? <laughs> I remember thinking, if he said, if he said, I want that, I'd have to give it up. <laughs> So a man with a gun. I told Suzanne, she said, no, he was probably thinking about nicking your car. He's got what, your What, he key. didn't have a car ready? He came, no, he had he the balaclava, it. he had the balaclava, the gun, and he goes, fuck me, I forgot the car. In the end, he sort of ran off down the back alley. I love the fact that you he looked over at you for a split second and you thought he might be interested in your Was pie. Was there other people around? Were Nicked you it. sure this happened and you weren't reading a comic book? No, it happened. And so he looked you in the face. He yeah, saw you. his balaclava, he made eye contact, I looked at him, everything sort of stopped for a minute. And then he just sort of legged it off down the back alley. And uh, he, wh what, did you do, what did you say to the police when you obviously were... I didn't, with... I didn't, I just went. Well, you were with the pie. Like I said, it was warm. Oh, it's not going to stay warm forever, is it? But wh when they when, when it was on Crime Watch a few weeks later... No, it wasn't, with... that's what was weird. I said to Suzanne, oh, let's watch, like, ground reports tonight, see if I'm on the telly or anything. Nothing. Didn't even get reported. Why would you be on the telly if you just ran just away? Just didn't say CCTV or something like that. If I was involved in it, they went, this happened today in Salford, outside Greg's. Are you this man with the pie? I wanted to make sure I was well out of this one. Because Suzanne sort of said, oh, should you get involved? But you shouldn't get involved, because then I'm at, thre I'm at risk, aren't I? Nobody well, there was you killed. Are. We're back to bravery again, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah, here's bravery. Go on, then. Next door but one. There's a fella there. He, uh, he likes a drink. He came home late one night, banging on the door. Obviously forgot his key. He was trying to kick the door in. I looked out the window, going, who's that thinking someone's breaking in? Right. I see it's in. I saw all the curtains twitching. He just went back to bed. Now I kept an eye on him. He kicked so hard, he fell back, dropped his curry, landed in the road. <laughs> dropped his curry! Right. Oh, God, why didn't he get a pie from Greg's? Because that lands and it's still fine. So, anyway, he passes out. <laughs> Right. Curry all over the shop. Yeah. Head in the road. Cars come down that road. Yeah. Sometimes pretty fast. Yeah, it's night time. He could yeah. get his head squashed. Yeah. Like I said, curtains are still a twitching. No one's a helping. <laughs> <laughs> I I go out there and I go, You alright? You alright? And he's he's totally off his head. He's obviously had a you know, alright skin full. Uh, he's going, oh, where am I, where am I? I'm going, you're outside your house, but you've got to get off the road because you're going to get squashed. So he's like, oh... And he could hardly move, so I sort of picked him up, sat him on the pavement, sort of picked up the curry and stuff. Suzanne came out, what's going on? I said, oh, look at him, he's in the right state. Anyway, he's sort of coming round a little bit. Um, in the end, I said, where's your keys? Got him in his house. Job done. But that's not bravery. That's not bravery. There was no there's threat no, to you. No. It's just put yourself out of it for two minutes. It is bravery because he's he's out of his head. He could have thought I was attacking him. He could have swung at me. Now the good he's thing is he's lying in the road, unconscious, covered in curry. <laughs> this this is not a threat. It is a threat. I'm out on the street late at night. Someone could have come around the corner and thought I was mugging him. And, and then they, they attacked me. Why would they attack you? They because they think, what, you, what, you, what are you doing? People don't ask questions because you're not allowed to. Like with a the sergeant, they chip in straight away. I know what's going on here. No, you don't. You don't know the full story. He's pissed up and his curry all over it. <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't blood. It's masala. <laughs> you hear about this all the time, misunderstandings. <laughs> now, I helped him. The day after, he remembers, he comes round and he gave me some minced meat that he had left over. <laughs> So the thing oh, is, it God. goes to show that I put myself out, he appreciated it, he said, you're right, you know, the way cars come round here, oh, I'd, I'd had a bit of a week, you know, I'd had a lot to drink, good on you. Now, no-one else chipped in. Now, it is bravery, kind of, because no. no-one else went out there and helped. You didn't even know about that. It's only because you just asked. It was ages ago. I don't shout about it. I don't want an award. <laughs> Have a go hero. I don't want any of that. I just <laughs> did There's bit. no have-a-go hero about it. Did you take the mincemeat? 
Yeah, I did, yeah, it was good stuff. Yeah, that's uh, better than a warden away, isn't it? I told him that. So, it depends. I think there's different <laughs> ways. Back mince meat. I love that. <laughs> I, would, uh, I was saved by a, a bald man. Slaughter my finest pig, <laughs> mince the meat, and send it to him. What about phrases from the uh, war days? What about things like um, careless talk costs lives? What do you make of that? Careless talk. I suppose just busy chatting in a trench rather than getting out there. <laughs> no, he doesn't! He doesn't mean that! Have another go. <laughs> careless talk costs lives. They used to have posters up all over London and other cities. Careless talk costs, costs lives. lives. There was another one, there's another saying that means the saying that might give you a clue. The walls have ears. Yeah, but that just means um, don't be slagging someone off because someone will hear it, pass it on, and then they'll end up fighting their own instead of who they should be fighting. Well, no, you're um, almost there, but think it, about what you mean. It's not about gossip, it's not about... Well, it, in a way it is, but it's, it's very specific in, gossip. Much more important, tittle-tattle. Careless whispers. No, that's that's that's, <laughs> that's George, George Michael. Michael. Say again. Okay. What's the first one again? Careless yeah. talk Careless. costs lives. I don't know. I imagine it being like a. Don't go shooting your mouth off about things you know about the war effort, because there might be a German spy in the pub disguised as a barmaid. Oh, you're lovely, Tracy. going, yeah, I'm Carl. What do you know about no, the war? That's true, know? that does happen. I remember our brother being in the army. He, he had the same thing. What? He was told he was told not to, because he liked the women and that. Yeah. He was told, listen. One of them might be a German spy? Yeah. He said, don't don't be going out with German women, because they're quite muscly. And Could be a man. There'll be a gang of them. No, and they'll do you in. Sorry, your brother was told... Don't go out with a gang of German women because they're quite muscly and they might do you in. Yeah, because it's all part of the thing. They sort of go out, like you say, pretending they're just like women out on the night because he was, he was in Germany for a bit. He was posted over there. Right. And apparently they target like British soldiers and that. And like I say, he, he likes his women. He'd just go along with it thinking this is good. Um, you know, Actung baby or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and you too. Hey, yeah. action, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, action, baby. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, got him in headlock and good night, Vienna. Well done. <laughs> good night, Vienna. Why, uh, why, would they, why are these random German women just killing it was it, British blokes? What, what's the reason for this? It was a proper thing. I remember him telling me, telling oh, me, Mum, saying, oh, girl, they had a right dilemma. I met some women, German. Couldn't go with them, though, because we were told that there might be, uh, you know, it might be trouble. Really, yeah. Honestly, that's that's Sorry, a fact. British soldiers were getting beaten up by German women. <laughs> this is not true. <laughs> Can't be. Why? If you're caught off guard, you're just thinking, oh, you know, out with the ladies, and then they suddenly turn on you. It's a shock. It's but a surprise. Why are they element. beating them up? With, it's, you're presumably talking about the because Cold he's War. a soldier. Yeah, but, but we they, were, they, they were allies then. Well, when your brother was stationed in Germany. He wasn't. It wasn't occupied Germany. We hadn't invaded. It wasn't. It wasn't the German resistance. They were stationed there because we're all in it together now. I don't know. Then there was just a problem with German women. 